Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your WageLock webinar. My name is Charlotte, and I will be hosting today's webinar. Today's session will run for approximately 45 minutes with 15 minutes of questions. Questions can be submitted at any time in the question box on the webinar's control panel. This webinar is to show you how to effectively reduce the time you spend on administrating your payroll and do away with errors. WageLock, a rostering and time attendance software company, have been around for over 10 years with over a thousand companies in many different industries using their powerful but easy to use software. WageLock will dramatically reduce the time you spend on payroll. Please join us and ask questions on how easy it is to complete your payroll tasks. Our presenter today is Chris Burke. Chris has over 20 years payroll experience, during which time he has developed strategies and procedures to improve efficiencies within the payroll office, paying over 20,000 employees effectively and on time from many different industries. His 10 years involvement with WageLock, rostering and time attendance software has given him a real insight into administ administering payroll from capturing hours worked to producing payslips. During these years, mainly as a sales executive dealing with SMBs, this understanding of their needs in both of these areas is exceptional, having sold over $20,000 worth, $20 million, sorry, dollars worth of ongoing revenue. Wage lock, rostering, and time and attendance software has over 1,000 businesses using their software, which is helping them to improve and reduce costs in administrating their vital services. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to hand you over to Chris. Good morning. Chris Burke here. It's good afternoon in the Eastern States. Uh, as you can see on the screen, wage lock, rostering, time and attendance software uh, is what I'm going to speak to you about today. Um, wage lock uh, is doing a special offer today uh, of 50 pen. 50% off setup costs, a saving of over $400. What we're covering today is, is rostering, our new developed web portal, reporting, time and attendance, and award interpretation, and the integration with Reckon. So today, with, let me just go through the first uh, part of the software, which is the rostering. I'll just put the password in. And then we can start. Okay, the rostering can be used for multiple sites. I've got five sites here. I've just named them under different industries that we're dealing with at the moment. So as you can see, we're into pharmacy, childcare, hotels. So I'll just go into pharmacy site. And what the roster, rostering software does, it holds every single roster that you produce because industrial relations laws say that you have to uh, save your rosters for seven years. We can create templates. We can do rotating rosters or you can just create a roster from the existing roster templates that you've got at the moment. So to start a new roster, you just click on the roster. The rosters automatically start from your next peer period. And what you see on the screen is that we've got Monday, we've got the days of the week across the top. So it's easy viewing. You can roster by the day, or you can even roster by staff member. So by just clicking this, ticking this box, you can just roster by the staff member with the names across the top. I'll go back to the, uh, the daily view. Now with the daily view, it's already got the rosters there for that particular day. And over the right hand side, it physically tells you how many hours you've rostered that person on, person on and the dollar value. Now that can be a true dollar value because we can add on costs such as um, superannuation, payroll tax. Now to change a person's start and finish times, it's just a matter of clicking and dragging. So if you look at Alice Jordan, I'm just going to make a start from it. Start from 8 a.m. and now she's finishing at 5 p.m. so it's, it's very easy to uh, visual see how many hours you're rostering the staff on. To add an extra shift to that day you can just place the shift in. I've left a lunch break 
and at roster on 9.5 hours. To select an employee who can work that day, all you do is press select. Now, the names of the people who can work this day, we've got not available, partially available, already rostered. So we've got the names of the employees on the left-hand side, what pay groups they're in, so whether they're full-time or casual, their pay levels, and you can do that in order, and, and the cost difference. So this is actually telling you how much it's going to cost to fill that shift. This is a real benefit because you can decide if you want a, an experienced person to work that day, whether they're full-time or casual, or you can cheap, just choose the, the cheapest person. So we'll, we'll click Amy, press OK, and Amy's name appears. Now across the top where it says count staff members, it actually tells you the number of people you've got working per hour. So during lunch lunchtime, we've got seven people. And at the end of the day, we've just got one person. And again, I'll just show you the different colors is the departments. So we've got the departments at the top. We can show everybody, as I am doing, or we can show each department individually. And they're all color-coded, which makes for a really visible roster. Now, the system also has a web portal where the, where the employees can get notified of their shifts. So this can be done on any PC, or they can do it on even on the mobile phones. I'll do it on the PC here. So we're just logging in. Now, they'll have their own generic uh, password to go, go in there. And they just press login. And this will take them to the web portal. Now, the web portal is more than just looking at what the rosters are available to them. So we're going to the roster. Let's go into the web portal. OK, in the web portal, we can do notifications. So if you've got a, a staff meeting coming up, uh, you can notify individual staff members, or you can notify all the staff members. As I'm just, and it saves all that information for you as well. And you can post the rosters up to 12 weeks in advance. So this is for uh, Alice Blogs, and it shows you the date, and the days of the week, for what time she's working, and tells her to take a 30-minute break. But within the web portal as well, we've got leave bookings. So you can request leave. Because the system accrues sick leave, annual leave, and long service leave. It also can do toil, which is time off in lieu. So if you've got multiple sites, you can choose your site. You can choose which leave you want. So I'll just do annual leave. You can put your date in. So we'll do from the Monday the 18th to, say, fr Friday 23rd. You can put a comment in there. So maybe a reason they're going away is because uh, they're getting married. Getting married. Oh, yeah. I'll just put that last day, it's not come up properly. I'll just put that in. Okay, so you can save that request. Now, once the request has been saved, it appears on here, on the right hand side box. So you've got your pending. You've got lead balances, so staff can show, physically go in there and see what leave they've got. I've just got annual leave up there, but you can have sick leave and long service leave up there as well. Now, the leave has to be approved by management. Once it's been approved, the leave will then populate roster. So if it's in three months' time, once you're doing the roster, it'll be populated for you. You can decline the leave also. Within the leave booking, we've also got unavailability. Unavailability is where your staff, especially your, your casual staff, can put a date range in between a certain date. I will probably just go a little bit further than that. It's just calculating, just bear with me. So we'll just go up to 30th. 
And then on the days, they can choose, can, not, can work at any time, between any time, before, let me just get this up on the screen, can work before, can work after, can work between, can work, work outside. So it covers every variable that a person is unavailable. Now, also we've got a management portal where managers can go in. This is mainly for, for uh, retail and hospitality if they want to see uh, sales reports. And what the sales reports does, first of all, you can select a date range. So we'll put a date range in. We'll go from the 1st of March to the uh, 30th of March. We can do it on the daily view, weekly view, or monthly view. We'll go on to monthly, and we can view a report. What this report will bring up is the total sales for that period, total wages for that period, and wage percentages, with total hours worked and hours not worked as well. So it, it, this is one of our new, new software developments. We only released it around about January. It's already been well well used and, and well recognized within within uh, our customer base. So I'll just go back to rosters. Also within rosters, if you do want to send the rosters, you can send it by email, you can send it by SMS, you can post it to the internet. So it's new. there's no way an employee should not know what day they're working now. Now within the roster itself, you can go to your budget tab, this tab will give you a cost per person per day. And if you go off fortnightly payroll, it'll give you week one total, week two total, and a grand total on the bottom right hand corner. Now that's showing it in dollar figures. We also can show it in timesheet. Showing it in timesheet is a visual look of how many hours your staff are working in penalty rates or in overtime. So, for instance, if you look at Elaine Smith, she's actually working 11.25 hours at $414 at double time. So, it's, it's really a warning can actually tell you exactly how much dollars uh, your employees are costing you across your, your award interpretation. And it also gives you your totals in hours and dollars as well. And at the bottom, it also tells you the number of hours and the dollars, 644 hours, and it's costing you that much dollars. We've, we also have a sales tab. What the sales tab tells you, it, it just drills down. So it, it, you can put your historical sales in, your projected sales. You've got your actual sales. And in some industries, like in pharmacy, we can talk, talk to POS systems. Uh, there's one particular one in pharmacy, MIMFOS, that we're integrated with. And there's, uh, there's plenty of others that we're talking to at present. So you've got your projected wages, which obviously come from your budget. You've got your actual wages, which comes from your, your daily checking of your, your hours worked by the employees. And I'll come to that in a second. And then you've got your, uh, your projected wages as a, uh, as a wage percentage and an actual wage percentage. Also shows you the number of hours you've rostered on, your actual hours worked, and your variance and some good on other information. It's got your projected sales per labor hour cost and your actual sales per labor hour cost. So just going back to the roster. Once you're happy with the roster, it's just a matter of saving it. Roster saved. And to post those rosters, you just go to publish rosters and you can do it by email. There's all the email addresses. You can do it by SMS. You put the individual telephone, mobile telephone numbers in there, and you can publish to the internet. So we'll, we'll quit that because that's not. I've not got that connected. Let's just ignore that. I've not got that connected. We don't usually use that much now because of the web portal. We've got leaving here that they can they can view as well and unavailability, but most of that now is done through the web portal. So the next stage I want to talk about is the time and attendance. So we'll go to the time and attendance screen. Up on the screen, you've got your employees' names. 
We've got blue names and red names at, at the moment. The ones in blue, I've just not had the fingers registered by the scanner. So how you do that, so Georgina is a new employee. You click on her name and just follow the instructions. So once you put your finger on the scanner, as I'm doing at the moment, the, the numbers are changed to a different color from red to green. And we do two fingers on each hand. So this is just for the very, very first time. So we'll do the second hand now. And the second finger on the second hand. And once that's done, it'll change to red. So Georgina now is ready to clock on and clock off. Now how we clock on and clock off is we have a dual recognition. So an employee comes in, they can use a mouse, which I'm using now, they click on the name and put the finger on the scanner. It registers them and says good morning and changes to green. So it's a visual sign for the employee knowing that they, they, they know what time they clocked on. So we'll do Fred Kelly as well. Now if you've got a touch screen, you can just do it with your finger. Put your finger on the scanner and again it will say good morning. To clock off, the same thing. Click, finger, goodbye. So it's a very, very simple process. But we have got a number of ways for clocking on and clocking off. 90% of our clients use the fingerprint scanner. We do have some who, who prefer passwords. We do have some prefer PIN numbers. And we're just releasing very shortly facial recognition. So that's four different ways. Oh, sorry, there's five different ways. We've also got an iris scanner. So five different ways we can get your, uh, your employees clocking on and clocking off. Once the staff have clocked on and clocked off and the administration person wants to confirm the hours of work, they go to the bottom right hand corner where it says confirm hours. So we'll go into confirmed hours. It's all password protected, so employees can't go in and adjust their own hours. Now what the system does, it brings up your pay period. I've got a fortnightly pay period, Monday to Sunday. Every day is green apart from Wednesday the 4th. Now the reason they're green is because you're physically, the administration person's physically gone into that day and approved the hours of work. So to show you what I mean, I'll go into Wednesday. Now Wednesday comes up, and there's three ways we can look at the staff. We can show all staff. You look at the filter underneath the white box. We can hide staff who won't get paid today, and only show exceptions. I like the show exceptions button because you're doing minimal checking then because the people that have clocked on at the right time, with the tolerances that you guys set up, it might be 10 minutes before start time or 10 minutes after. You don't really need to look at those people because they've done the right thing. The staff have done the right thing. You can just, you'll just confirm the hours when you press the OK button after checking these uh, exceptions. So first of all, I like going down to Elaine Smith. Elaine Smith has got the black bar across the top. That black bar is her standard hours, or rostered hours or standard hours. And over the right hand side, it tells you the number of hours she's going to get paid for that day, which is 8.25. Now the green bar is the paid hours. As you can see, the green bar and the black bar matches. So if you pressed OK, everybody would get paid those hours because of the, the matchup of the black and green. But if you look at the orange bars coming down with the time, that is the actual clocking and clocking off times. So Elaine was very late this day. She should have started at 8.45, but she clocked in at 9.55. So there's two things you can do. You can peer from a start time. You just click and drag. And now she's getting paid from a start time. Or you could have left it as the way it was. Now Fred Kelly, who's in a different department, he's actually clocked on early, 8.34, where he should have clocked on at 9 o'clock. Now you just leave that 
as it is unless you're going to authorize that overtime. If you want to authorize the overtime, all you do is click and drag. So again, it's very visible, visible and easy to see. We'll just put that back to normal. Now, you can see you and Jenny have clocked on and clocked off, but there's no black bar there or green bar. The reason for this is that they've been called in off the roster. So they've not been rostered on, they've just been called in on the day. They've also got no paid hours on the right hand side. So you need to pay them. So it's a matter of just clicking with your mouse and dragging. Leave a lunch break or you don't have to, it's up to you. And again, the same with Jenny. You can leave 15 minutes or half an hour, or you, you can insert ships, you can insert into a ship, a break, say 30 minutes, uh, insert, or you can have an unpaid break, okay. I did that one. Run the other one. <clears throat> just all done, sorry. I'll just clear that, I'm not breaking. Okay, so, You've confirmed all the hours worked by the employees. You've got a sales total. So if it's not coming in electronically, you can do this manually. So I'll just put any figure in there. You can even put notes in. Uh, I did miss Alice blog. She's not clocked on the clock off. So maybe she rang in sick. So you can right click and choose sick leave. In this drop down box, we can put anything. So if you lift again paid at a higher rate for a, a certain number of hours, you can pop those things in as well. Alice also is not clocked on and clocked off. So you can right click again. She hasn't got sick leave either, or annual leave, which makes her a casual. So you, you, you can't apply sick leave to a casual person, obviously. But if she didn't work, you can just clear. And the reason Alice was sick, you can put in there. So you can press OK. <clears throat> OK, so what comes up next, again, is the fortnightly pay period. Wednesday is now turned green, which means the next button is highlighted. Every day has to be green before the next button is highlighted. Once you press next, this is where the system comes into itself. It's very intuitive and very clever. It actually interprets your award. Now we've come across many, many awards and we've not failed one award yet. We've been able to separate all the hours into the correct pay categories. Your pay categories across the top here. And you can do adjustments here if you wish to do so. If you've gotten, forgotten to pay uh, maybe a travel allowance, you can put in. We can, we can put many things across this timesheet. You can have as long as or short as you want. Once you're ready to submit the timesheet into Reckon, all you do is press Submit. Once you press Submit, it tells you that the timesheet has now gone into your payroll. So once you've done that, you just press OK. And what I'll do, I'm going to introduce you to Matt. So it's successfully gone across. I'm going to introduce you to Matt, who's one of our senior developers, who is the expert in Reckon. So he's going to show you how it's gone into Reckon. So please welcome Matt. There you go, Hi, you guys. Okay, um, so basically now you've submitted your timesheets from WageLog. Um, the last step obviously is paying your staff members. So if you load up your WageLog, uh, your Reckon, sorry, um, all we need to do is go into Payroll Center. Now I've got a scheduled payroll in here. You can have unscheduled payroll, scheduled, doesn't really matter. Um, if I just go to that scheduled payroll, we actually have timesheet information. So all that timesheet information that we've sent through from WageLog, um, wage of time there has come through into this screen. Now, the columns it goes into is uh, set up in a, in a mapping uh, on wage.cloud control and you basically set where the hours 
flow through into Reckon. So if you want um, public holiday worked or ordinary hours or anything to go into hourly pay, that's where you'd put it. Uh, overtime, anything like that. Now, um, just to standardise it, I put all my columns there into this hourly pay column, so you can see there that that's why um, we've got our hours totaled up into that column. Now, from here, you can make any adjustments that you want to, so you can click on staff members. You can still add in anything uh, you want into this screen here, so if we want to add an extra nine hours in, um, we can do so. Now, you can see it's gone blue to show you that there's an adjustment being done. From here, all you need to do is click the continue button. Um, I won't do it for this purpose, but you click the continue button and then uh, continue processing that pay into uh, the bank. So it's a, it's a really easy process. Once you've submitted from WageLock, in Reckon here, you just come into your, um, I'll get out of that, your scheduled payroll or your unscheduled payroll. Make sure you choose the dates of the fortnight that you're looking for or the week, depending on what you are and then your um, timesheet information will automatically be downloaded. Now within um, Reckon as well, if we have a look at enter time, so this one, this timesheet we've sent through is um, for the 26th of the 5th. If I just choose an employee here, I can actually go back and you can actually see all the information uh, previously that WageLock has sent through. Um, so what was it, the 27th of the 5th. So, looking for it in here, where is it? Um, but yeah, basically this screen will, uh, will give you uh, your timesheets. Let me just have a look for someone. So Alice Bloggs. Um, paper ending the 8th of the 6th, 2014. Okay. Hmm. Hang there. Okay, that's what I wanted to get up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so basically this will give you all the hours that have come through. You can even send to jobs if you need to. Um, the days that have been paid for, and you can see here that it gives you a text in here to say that it has been created from WageLot. So if there is, is anything um, you need to look back at, you can come into this screen and you can see whether it's a manual adjustment or whether it's been created from uh, our system or anything like that. So that's basically the, uh, the integration with WageLock and um, I reckon there, it's very simple. Uh, all, all you have to do is select what file you're sending it through to, what columns you want to send it through to, so payroll columns, and um, the rest is done for you. Now, within WageLock as well, there are some options you've got set. So you can actually choose to update the rates from WageLock uh, into Reckon, and you can also choose to um, only check those rates. So if you wanted to choose update those rates, it is what we do recommend because it makes it a lot easier for payroll uh, processing your pays and stuff like that. You'd select the option in this screen here. Um, only check or do not update. So it's up to you what you want to do. Um, there's also the uh, assigned departments to reckon classes as well. So that's where you, if you've got um, different job qualifications or anything like that, and you want to cost it out, you can also assign uh, those departments we've got created in the system to specific jobs and stuff like that. So that's fine. Yeah. So that's okay. that's, I think I'll pass you back on the quiz, and I'll thank you for your time. Well, that's the end of the uh, webinar process, so I'll pass back to Charlotte, and if there's any questions, I will answer them for you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for ready? the demonstration. No um, problem, Charlotte. There haven't been any questions coming through just yet. I'm not sure if anyone would like to okay. submit a question for Chris to assist you guys with. I'm sure there's lots of questions you could ask guys, I'm, I'm sat here waiting and uh, 
quite happy to uh, discuss the integration with Reckon, the rosters, time and attendance, the web portal. And I just want to remember there uh, this is our yeah. Yeah, just giving you out our contact details, guys. If you if you haven't got any questions at the moment, please take these details down. Um there has been a question that's come through, Chris. Okay. Um, do you have to set up your payroll in Reckon the same as the roster names in WageLock? Uh, not roster names. So do you mean, um, so you're talking about your uh, timesheet categories and stuff, like overtime and stuff? No, you don't. That's all, um, it can be separate. So you do have to map it, uh, which is basically mapping means um, choosing where you want to send the WageLock's category through into uh, Reckon. So the names don't have to be the same as long as you've mapped them correctly. That's all it is. Okay, that's great. Um, a few people are asking around costing. Should they get in contact with you directly as per the email yes, address please. there? Yeah, the contact details are there. So if they, whichever the state they're in, they can ring the, these telephone numbers or they can go directly to the email address uh, or, or the website and uh, they can fill out a web inquiry. So it's just a matter of filling out those details. And um, this links to Reckon Hosted, yes? Or Reckon One as well? Yes, it does. We're, still, we're still in testing phase at the moment, but yes, basically it does go into Reckon Hosted. And Reckon One? Uh, not Reckon One yet. That's the next thing that I'm working on. Um, so it shouldn't be too long before we get something out for Reckon One. Um, but yeah, at the moment, yeah, Reckon Host is the only one we're going to, and the desktop product, obviously. Okay. But yeah, we should, um, if you do contact us, we can keep you updated when we are into Reckon One. So get in touch with us, let us know, and we'll um, yeah, get back in touch and let you know that we do integrate with Reckon One. Okay, that's great. Um... Any more questions out there? I put on the special offer for today, which is a four hundred dollars saving of on up on the setup cost. That's great. Thanks for that, Chris. Um, someone did ask what's involved in the initial setup. Okay, initial setup is obviously we we contact the person who's in in charge of uh, Reckon. Uh, because we do grab a lot of the information, well, most of the information of Reckon, uh, which then is put into wage lock. Setup period is usually around about two weeks from the date of us receiving the contract back. So it's minimal setup for the for the for the uh, the client. Uh, we do, like I said, about ninety percent of the setup for them. It's just a matter of them choosing which pay rate against the employee's name. Yeah, so we're also helping. Um, we can actually import the uh, staff list as well out of Reckon. Um, wage up needs the staff list, obviously, for rostering and for time attendance side of it uh, and costing and stuff like that. So we'll pull all the staff list out. We can help you pull all the staff list out from Reckon. And we'll help you go through and map your categories as well. Um, so everything goes through smoothly. And when it comes to first payroll, uh, we also get back in touch with you. And we'll make sure that everything flows through smoothly from away shop to reckon and if we do encounter anything we can easily sort that of out of there. So you're not left in the dark or anything like that. The whole setup, the whole uh, everything from getting it installed on your system to showing you how it works and to um, processing your payroll is all you know assisted and you're not left on your own sort of thing. I just do want to say one more thing, Charlotte, is that any industry that employs in employs people, wage lock is suitable for. We even have companies with three employees using the product. All the way up to multiple sites, our largest sites are 70 sites. So there's a, 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 a you know a vast difference in um, in industries and vast difference in numbers that we can uh, uh, who can utilize this software. It's good to know. Thanks. Um, someone else has asked, how does it access awards information? So 
So we, we get that information from you guys. Uh, basically, how you pay your staff members will get it in like a rate sheet. Uh, we'll enter that in on our end, and if you need to update that or change that at any time, you just get in touch with uh, one of our help desk uh, operators, and we can actually adjust that for you. So it's very quick, very easy, and it doesn't take very long at all. So what Matt's actually saying is that we do the award interpretation for you, you give us the rules, and we'll set them up in the background. So they don't have to, clients don't have to worry about that on their side. Okay, sure. I'm not sure if anyone else has any further questions for today. And there is a question that's come through. Is there a setup cost per employee? No, it's a once-off setup cost, which is usually $990. But now it's been brought down to $590 with that saving, just for the attendees today. But no setup cost per employee, it's just a once-off cost. And then we have a weekly charge uh, for per site which if, if anybody's really keen to know that, they can contact us. And can you set up yourself? Um, there's no self-set up at this stage. Uh, basically, we can give you the installation um, and all the codes and stuff like that, and you can install it yourself. Um, we have to do the award interpreter on our end because it, it can be very um, confusing and stuff like that, so we have to do it from our end because it's you know, it'd be too hard for a customer to learn and, and work out how to do that side of it. Um, but apart from that, I mean, that's that's all there really is to it. Once the award's set up, we can give you installation codes, we can set you all, set you up, and um, you're ready to go. You can do whatever you need to there. Um, the other thing about Wagejock is there's no cost per PC or anything like that. So because it's cloud-based as well, you can install Wagejock on as many PCs as you want, um, and you don't get charged any extra for it as well. So. That's another handy thing I've just thought of that you know as well. Come on guys, there must be thousands of questions you want to ask us. There is another one that's just come through. Um, will it work with Reckon that is not hosted? Yes, so that's the desktop product that we were just showing just then. Um, it does work very well actually with the um, desktop product. So it's very, very quick and, and efficient there. Is there a fingerprint reader that needs to be purchased to use this option? Yes, there is. The fingerprint uh, reader is $225. It's a USB fingerprint re reader, so it plugs into any existing computers that you have, and also any uh, tablets, uh, Samsung, Windows run their tablets that have a USB connection. Okay, I think we've reached the end of the questions then and the presentation for today as there's no real other questions coming through at the moment. Um, thank, you okay. all, thank you all for attending and participating and thank you for Chris and Matt for the presentation. Um, Hope to see you all at the next session. Perfect. Which is much. Wednesday, everybody. So look forward to speaking on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.